It is uh, 7 o'clock. This is the January 24th regular City Commission meeting. Uh, this is the second regular City Commission meeting in January, and uh, we are in Commission Chambers. I hope you felt welcomed as you came in this evening uh, by our airport manager, Stephen Licklider, and also our utilities manager, Bob Priest, who served as, served as our greeters tonight. I want to introduce the folks who are sitting up in front of you. To my right, your left, is Recording Secretary Taylor Lockhart, our City Clerk Susan Dauteris, Commissioner Lori Tolland. Good evening. Zone 1. And then Zone 2 Commissioner Travis Sargent. Good evening. To my left and your right, we have Commissioner from Zone 3, Susan Persis. Good evening, everyone. Deputy Mayor and Zone 4 Commissioner Harold Briley. Good evening, folks. Our City Manager, Joyce Shanahan. Assistant City Manager, Claire Whitley. City Attorney, Randy Hayes. And way over to my left and way over to your right, we have uh, Captain Chris Roos and Fire Chief Howard Bailey. For those of you listening online, I'm Mayor Bill Partington. Uh, at this time, if you would please silence your cell phones, uh, we are going to have the invocation given by Pastor Mike Petrick from Harbor Baptist Church, and that'll be followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Please rise for the invocation. Let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for your goodness and your mercies to us yet again. Thank you, Lord, that we can come together here and do city business. And we know that if it means something to us, certainly it means something to you. And so, Father, I pray all things be done decently in order. And God, that you would be just a, a watchful eye over all things done tonight. We give you praise. You're worth it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, this is what we call the fun fun part of the meeting where we do uh, honors, awards, proclamations, and you get to meet some of the special people who live in and make our community work. And uh, tonight, we're very lucky to have the Ormond Beach Bills flag football team, and I'll ask uh, their coach, Jason Williams, come on up and bring your team up. These guys had an undefeated season this year, so give them a round of applause. Now, we're very proud of our athletic programs in Ormond Beach, proud of our athletic fields, and uh, this commission and prior commissions have put a lot of effort, a lot of hard work, a lot of hours into making sure that we have great facilities and being able to I had the opportunity to come out and see a couple games this year coach you do an amazing job with these guys and uh, the testament to that is the fact that they went undefeated for the season so wanted to have you here recognize you the great thing about those ball fields is that after a hard day of work if you're a parent you can go out there with your child parent guardian uh, significant family member, whatever it is, and then you have the grandparents out there as well, and then you have friends of the family, and so you have all these different generations coming together to support what is our future, and these guys participating in a wholesome health activity, putting down the tech, uh, putting down the cell phones and the iPads and everything else, getting away from the TV, it's, just, it's awesome. So we wanted to bring you here. Uh, we're going to take a picture with you with the commission standing up behind you, but uh, we have medals for you guys to recognize your, uh, your accomplishment. And you can eat these medals. That's probably the best thing. <laughs> the chocolate.
chocolate medals. I don't know if you've ever had Angela Phelps, but we might as well start you young on that. Angela <laughs> Phelps. Next, we have a very special uh, proclamation and Key to the City presentation. I'll ask uh, Michael Armand Wilson to come forward. You can come up by yourself, Michael. Or you can bring your family up, whatever you want to do. It's up to you. You want your family to come up? When your brothers cheer for you like that, it's awesome to have them come forward. Good stuff. Let me tell you, uh, I had the opportunity to be principal for a day back in November, I think it was, and at Pathways Elementary School, Joshua Jackson does an amazing job out there. Before school started, I was standing in the uh, drop-off line, and this young man comes up, introduces himself to me, the assistant principal. Uh, introduced him as well and she explained who he was and what an impact he'd made on that school and that he was running for student government president correct because yes. you're a fifth grader awesome and so I found out just a little bit ago that he was successful he won the office so congratulations on that. So I wanted to bring you here and recognize you. This young man's going to do great things, um, but we're going to present him with a proclamation tonight. And I'm going to have you hold this. Okay. And I'll read it. Got it? Your brothers can help you, too, if you need to. <laughs> Whereas Michael Armand Wilson was born in Rochester, Minnesota, and has lived in Ormond Beach for two and a half years. And whereas Armand loves the city of Ormond Beach, as a dedicated citizen, he is always seeking new ways to contribute to the community by volunteering at beach cleanups, working at the Humane Society, and also the Women's Shelter. And whereas Armand already has a passion for politics and continually proves to be a born leader, he encourages his family to get out and vote together. He was vice president of his fourth grade class and now accomplished his goal to win the student government election for class president of his fifth grade class at Pathways Elementary. He's passionate about the war in Ukraine and comments to his parents daily regarding the activity in that country. And whereas Armand's five main values include one, inclusion, everyone matters, two, kindness, promote kind acts and celebrate students, three, bright ideas, promoting the sharing of bright ideas and implementing them, and four, cleaner community and schools, and five, more clubs and opportunities. And whereas Armand enjoys playing tennis and participating in the United States Tennis Association League, he also plays basketball, violin, and piano, and he greatly enjoys playing with his two brothers and pet golden doodle, Coco. <laughs> Based on all that, now therefore, I, Bill Partington, Mayor of the City of Ormond Beach, Florida, do hereby proclaim today, January 24th, 2023, as a day to recognize Michael Armand Wilson in the City of Ormond Beach and encourage all residents to join with me in recognizing young Mr. Wilson for his achievements and contributions to the community. Congratulations. <laughs> Now, uh, we have a key to the city that we give to our young folks, and I've got one 
you, Armand. The chief, I don't know if he made it tonight, but he has told me that, are you driving yet? Perfect. I was worried you were going to say yes to that question. Good. You should not be driving yet. Once you start driving, uh, the chief has told me that you can exchange this and they will dismiss a non-criminal traffic infraction. Is that right? So, this is very valuable. Uh, you can wear it, wear it with pride and use it, use it only if you need it. Um, so congratulations. And then just because I happen to have some extra uh, medals available, I've got enough one for you and one for each of your brothers, if that's okay with mom and dad. Mom and dad, you are doing an amazing job. Audience remarks, uh, these are regarding items not on the agenda, and tonight we will start with Dr. Philip Shapiro. Dr. Philip Shapiro, 140 Old Mill Road, Auburn Beach, immediate past president of Auburn Beach Historical Society. A number of years ago, at a Quality of Life Advisory Board meeting, I coined the phrase Museum Corridor. The idea that I expressed was to have a newly renovated and expanded art museum to the east side of this corridor and an historic landmark cultural center, the casements, on the west side of the corridor. The idea that was presented was to include a city historical museum and welcome center located within the historic McDonald House in the central part of this museum corridor. Such an addition would certainly benefit downtown redevelopment and commerce. At the present time, there is no venue for our residents, visitors, students or researchers to have access to a comprehensive educational resource that explains our area's rich and extensive history. Our community should have the opportunities available to make Ormond Beach a place for recreation, education, and quality of life. An historical museum is an integral part of such opportunities. The City Commission should commit itself to working with the Ormond Beach Historical Society to develop a city-owned McDonald House into a first-class, technologically advanced museum. The Ormond Beach Historical Society Board of Directors is fully behind this endeavor, and we have demonstrated for over 45 years our commitment to excellent leadership and stewardship in our areas of responsibility. It's time for Ormond Beach to move forward to the next level of serving our community for the benefit of our residents and visitors. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Next is Jerry Lampy. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Could a new museum, uh, Ormond Beach Museum of History and Welcome Center, is a prominent location on Granada Boulevard, halfway between the Ormond Memorial Art Museum and Gardens, the casements, and the Hotel Ormond Cupola will complete Ormond Beach's 
walkable museum row and become a destination attracting both residents and visitors to our downtown beachside area. It will add to the economic prosperity of downtown and beachside as recommended in the 2019 Ormond Beach Downtown Master Plan Update and it will contribute significantly to the city's quality of life. The Florida Association of Museums has reported that museums and the arts are a $120 million industry in Florida and provide over 3,200 jobs. Furthermore, the cultural tourist statistically stays longer and spends more money in an area. These cultural tourists also spend money on area restaurants and hotels, which they can access from the museum's video wall along with other local businesses and historic events and sites. With the commission's approval and supervision, the Historical Society will complete the job of renovating the McDonald House, in this case the interior three floors that are badly in need of repair to two floors of which are currently unusable space. These efforts will ultimately bring considerable economic benefit to the Ormond Beach community and make the historic McDonald House economically viable and a point of community pride. The Ormond Beach Historical Society takes responsibility for the fundraising required to raise the $2.5 million, the estimate for renovation and modern museum creation and Welcome Center in Hanson, uh, replete with interactive and experiential technology. In fact, we have already successfully begun the private mode of the capital campaign, but further progress has been impeded by the fact that major donors who are savvy investors want to see that the city will approve a 50-year lease for the McDonald House. Currently, the final obstacle to arriving at a long-term lease is the tennis center located at the McDonald House. Therefore, we respectfully request that the city seek a solution for the tennis center as part of its strategic planning process early this year. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next is Randy J. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. I'm here to talk about the McDonald House as well. And what I'd like to do is uh, give a statement of benefits of a museum and kind of like the uh, issues that a locality has without a museum. So, first of all, I, I'm an historian, so and I'm also on the Ormond Beach Historical Society's Board of Directors. So, I do a lot of traveling, and I do a lot of museums. And the first thing you notice when you go into a community, if they have a museum, they're, they're stating a fact that they they enjoy their local history, they're proud of it, they're showing it. It's, it's, a, it's really community identity, it's community purpose. And that's something that's lacking here in Ormond Beach. Um, like uh, Dr. Shapiro said, it brings in visitors, travelers, locals. People come to town, one of the, what's the first thing you want to do? You want to take them to your local museum. You want to show off your history. You want to show them that your locality has a lot of purpose and it had a lot of parts of the, of the beginning of where we're at today came from these great pieces of our, our local history's past. Some of the communities in the area, smaller than Ormond Beach, they have museums, Flagler Beach, Holly Hill, uh, they're, they're fantastic, they're small, but they, they, they show community pride and they show that that community is really proud of itself and where they came from. Um, if you have a building to house all your local artifacts, a lot of things start to happen. Uh, some of the artifacts that, that we run across, people don't know where to donate them to. They're being lost to history. Uh, they're being sold on eBay for, for a nickel and a dollar. They're being put out to the, the curb to throw, be thrown out. You lose these artifacts forever. Right now, we can't tell people we have a place to, to put these, these artifacts in. So there's all kinds of windows and things like that from the Ormond Hotel that are still around but I suspect they're going to be disappearing in the next decade or so because there's really nowhere to house them. Um, some of the, uh, the the other things that we're losing is grant money, donation money. If there was a museum here and up and running, we could file for all kinds of grants. Uh, people in general area could donate money and other things like artifacts, like I said. 
and, and also if you don't have a museum it's kind of like your community identity is being diluted a little bit and that's why you know we're really all about trying to get this museum um, in place and out there for the benefits of the community and, and the whole area in general. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is Bobby Coleman. Bobby Coleman, 28 Iroquois Trail in the wonderful city of Ormond Beach. Uh, good evening, Mr. Mayor, my friends and commissioners here, Ms. Shanahan. <laughs> Want to let you know, our city is rich in quality of life. It's rich in culture, education, activities, heritage, and so much more. We have a beautiful art museum that you and our residents support. We have fine schools that, produce, that are producing graduates that we hope will continue to live here. We have a multitude of activities and ball fields to provide for youth and seniors. We have considerable history here, from the Tamuka Indians to an 18th century sugar mill and rum distillery a home built from the salvaged remains of a shipwreck, a home where the richest man in the world lived and died, the original racing on the beach, and famous people who wintered each year here. But you know what we don't have? A museum with our abundant history to, the, to our area. A place where our citizens, our children, and our visitors can go to see what a wonderful city we have that preserves its past. We already have a central location along Museum Row or Museum Corridor that would lend itself as a place for residents as well as visitors to learn about our heritage. It would be a place for our children to study and learn about the city and state they're growing up in. Some of you know that Bob and I do a lot of traveling in our RV. We often stay in campgrounds near small towns and enjoy visiting the historical museums. We always come away saying, if they can support one, why can't we? And more and more travelers are looking for learning experiences and ecological adventures, not just sitting on the beach all day. I ask that you help them as well as us for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Bobby. And Bobby, if you, when you're standing next to Bob, if you guys can stand up for just a second. Commission, I don't know if you're aware, I had the opportunity to uh, attend the Civic League of the Halifax Area's award ceremony on Saturday evening. And our own Ormond Beach power couple here, Bob and Bobby Coleman, were presented the 22-23 Beacon Award for everything they've done in this community over the last 40-some years. And they deserve a round of applause. Congratulations again. All right, and uh, now we go to Dwight Selby. to uh, the new members of the commission and to the returning members of the commission. I'm here tonight to talk to you about the first uh, homeless shelter. 
I have three things I, I want to bring to your attention. The first one is the results from 2022, and there's a flyer uh, at your uh, at your places uh, that, in, uh, that tell you about the impact of the shelter. The second thing is uh, I want to talk a little bit about hand handling and a, a strategy that was uh, developed by uh, Daytona Beach City Commissioner Stacy Cantu. And the third thing is the gala, the first annual, or first inaugural, uh, first ever um, uh, mayor's gala which will be a week from Saturday at the Daytona Beach Hilton. And we've heard from three of you, and we hope that everybody will, will be able to make it uh, with your spouses if, uh, if they're available also. And so let me just begin with, the, um, with, uh, with this flyer, the impact uh, statement for 2022 impact report. Um, I just want to highlight a couple of things. In, uh, in 2022 and last year, there were 380 people. Uh, that resided in the, that were in the program at the shelter. 223 of those people, 60% of them graduated, and they are now living independently. So people who were living without shelter, you know, out in the woods or wherever, are now living independently. 96 people got jobs. Um, and uh, in the bottom left corner of this, uh, you, you know, and this, these are pretty amazing results in light of the, um, the challenges that this population uh, faces. And I'll just read that real quick for the benefit of the audience. 90% of the residents have underlying chronic medical conditions, depression, addiction, bipolar, PTSD, diabetes, cancer, and more. So this is a very challenged, physically uh, challenged population. The second item I wanted to talk about was panhandling. You, you probably have read in the book. Oh, man, I'm out of time. Okay, well, I'm going to do this real quick. Uh, <laughs> Daytona Beach is going to be putting up these signs, and they're going to make this artwork available to us, along with a QR code that, um, that allows people to donate directly to the shelter, really, versus giving money to panhandlers. Okay? And uh, I think this is a really good thing. The QR code is big enough that you can see it from your car and you can flash it with your phone and it takes you directly to the First Step Shelter site with a donate button and so forth. And I would encourage you to make the artwork available to Horman and I hope that we would consider putting these up in the appropriate places. Thank, Thank you, you, Commissioner. I would have paid money before to hear that buzzer go off, but I just got <laughs> to do it for free. And commissioners, uh, Commissioner Cantu brought those to the elected roundtable Monday yes. morning. Uh, and those are in Daytona's colors, but she said we could use our own colors. And I immediately, as you probably did, started thinking of places where they might work really well. So thank you for that. Yep. We'll see you on the 4th. Next is Councilman Troy Kent, Volusia County Councilman Troy Kent. Mr. Mayor, City Commissioners, it is an honor to be before you this evening. I want to start and just say these are Troy Kent's comments. These are not the comments or endorsements of the County Council. This is Troy Kent, 130 Magnolia Drive, Ormond Beach, Florida. One of my main goals is to be impactful for the residents of Volusia County. I am hopeful that the cities I represent, Ormond Beach, Holly Hill, and Daytona Beach, will have the best relationship with the county that you have ever had or had in, in quite some time. I am here to help any way that I can. Ms. Shanahan, Mr. Hayes, um, feel free to reach out if anything that, that you think I can do to, to help our residents in Volusia County. Our first meeting, we made some changes. And it's important to note that our meetings will no longer start at 9.30 a.m. The first meeting of every month at the County Council Chambers will start at 10 a.m. The second meeting will start at 4 p.m. It gives an opportunity for people that work during the day to participate in their local government, and I think that's important. So the meeting times have been changed. Two more things I want to talk to you about. I successfully have an item on the agenda in a month it's actually February 21st, to talk about a discussion item on having dog-friendly sections on our beach. 
To me, um, as a dog lover, this is a way that we can impact our residents in a positive way. It is low hanging fruit in my opinion. It will not cost a lot of money. It can be done in a common sense way where our dogs are leashed in a specific area. If Ormond Beach would like to have that in their area, I would highly recommend you all talk about it as an elected body and possibly get a letter to your county council stating where you stand on the issue. In two months, and by the way, this is my 19th day sworn in. In two months, I have successfully um, been able to get a discussion item about the pay structure for vehicles on the beach. You, it's, no, it's no surprise to you all where I stand on what Volusia residents should pay to get on our beach, and it's a big fat goose egg zero. All others should pay. And I don't mind saying handsomely, but Volusia residents shouldn't. And I've heard $25 isn't a lot of money, um, well, if it's not a lot of money, then we shouldn't be charging it for our residents. Last but not least, I held my first district dialogue for residents yesterday in Ormond by the Sea. We had over 60 people show up. It was fantastic. And I'll just say my next one is Monday, May 15th at the Ormond Beach Library, 5 to 6 p.m. Have a nice night. Thank you, Councilman. And next is Connie Colby. Good evening, Connie Colby, 108 Global Lane, Ormond Beach. Um, I didn't plan to be here tonight, but today I happened to be going to Walmart from where I live and found out that um, Hand Avenue had been closed between Clyde Morris and Williamson, um, except for local traffic going into Chelsea Place. Um, I, if this commission has any influence with the construction that's going out that way by Williamson, if this is going to be a long-term closure, I would appreciate it if somebody would do something to prevent this from happening or at least provide some way for one lane to go west because that is <clears throat> a big way of people from where I live going out to that section of town and the hospital south of that, Walmart, any way out that way. <clears throat> it also puts a lot more traffic onto Granada because people were going out and they were U-turning up at Chelsea Place because they were missing the sign that was off to the right side of the road. Coming back, going across Clyde Morris, which was backing up to go up either way. Um, so if somebody could help with that or find out if it's going to be long-term for the construction that's going on out there, we'd appreciate that. Um, one other thing I would like more information about, um, I see the Daytona Beach Avalon Park is looking to construct, or to, um, uh, to develop a West Daytona Community District in Avalon Park. And from what I, I don't know a lot about them, but it, sounds, it looks like that they want to be doing their own water supply out there. They will own the water from what I can see anyway. Um, and it looks like Ormond Beach may be cut out of this altogether. I would like to know how it's going to affect Ormond Beach if at all. Um, I don't know anything else more about it, but it, it sounds like with the water plant that you were planning on developing out to the west side of town, a lot of that would be for Avalon Park and Flagler too. So if anybody has some information, I would like to know more about it. Thank you. Thank you, Connie. All right. uh, Commission, I received an email copy uh, from the attorney for the Timber Creek apartment project requesting a continuance. This is items 8J and 8K, a two-week continuance. Um, I'll let Mark Watts, who represents them, come forward and explain that, and then we can entertain that if, if the commission so desires. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members Good of the Commission. Uh, for the record, Mark Walsh with the law firm of Cobb Cole, 231 North Woodland Boulevard, Glam. Um, yeah, I appreciate the opportunity to come up early in your agenda. I don't want to keep anybody here that might be here for that item, but we've had a, a, a series of meetings ongoing over the past several months with some of the neighboring property owners in Indian Springs in particular, and we had a follow-up meeting with uh, several of their representatives on Thursday. 
and came up with a list of six or seven additional revisions to our plan that may make things better for us as neighbors. And so we're working on making some revisions to that, meeting back with them to make sure you know, it accomplishes the goals that we talked about on Thursday. So rather than try and list those here for you this evening in the context of hearing and talk about unclear plans, we, uh, we would just ask that you give us a couple of weeks to see if we can uh, resolve some of those lingering concerns and come back to you, hopefully with, with a plan that, that uh, meets some of the, more, some of the uh, um, requirements that the neighbors have, have asked us to address. Any questions for Mr. Watts, Commission? Does anyone wish to make that motion? And if so, let me know so I can uh, open the public hearing in order to I'll do I'll make that. a motion. To All right, hold on first. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and open up uh, the public hearing. The applicant has requested public hearing items 8J and 8K be continued to the next commission meeting in two weeks. Um, he has explained that request, and uh, so Commissioner Sergeant, it's a procedural matter if you'd like to make that motion at this time. I'll make a motion to uh, for a continuation of 8J and 8K for two weeks. Second. Moved and seconded. Um, any discussion on the motion? I'd like to make a comment. Commissioner Sergeant. I think this is a, a very good idea, um, and it's, it's nice to see that y'all are working together with residents, and um, I, I think it's very good that we're not rushing it through in another two weeks. I think it's, it's a very good move. Thank you. Anyone else? Please call the vote. Commissioner Tolland. Yes. Commissioner Sargent. <coughs> yes. Commissioner Persis. Yes. Commissioner Riley. Yes. Mayor Partington. Yes. And at this time, I will close the public hearing. Thank you. Yep. All right. Uh, approval of the minutes. The minutes have been sent to the commission for review. These are from the January 10th, 2023 City Commission meeting. Uh, they've also been posted to the city's website. Any additions, deletions, or corrections? Fair move approval. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. And we'll show those being approved unanimously. The consent agenda, does any member of the commission wish to pull any item off of the consent agenda? If not, I just need a motion and a second. I move approval of the consent agenda. Second. Moved and seconded. Please call the vote. Commissioner Sargent. Yes. Commissioner Persis. Yes. Commissioner Briley. Yes. Commissioner Tolland. Yes. Mayor Partington. Yes. In. In this time, if any commissioner would like to comment on any of the consent agenda items, and I think I heard Commissioner Tolland. Yep. Sorry, I'm never into this flow yet, so I apologize. No um, uh, um, related to 7A, I just want to say that I'm, um, I'm proud of these legislative initiatives. Um, I'm particularly going to enjoy the priority of the water protection and sustainability <laughs> and also the uh, mobility plans that the legislation supports um, traditional and altern alternative modes of transportation. But the other comment I'd like to make is um, on resolution 2023-35, I had a discussion earlier today with staff because in, in the packet we didn't have a um, the bid proposal for the subcontractor. I was a little concerned about that, and uh, staff got right on it. So thank you so much, Alex, for getting all of that, and Stephen and Joyce for, and Randy for getting everything together. And you have that um, sheet of paper in front of us with the bid. And I just want to say that I, I pulled it because I have a son-in-law that has done this for a living, a side job. So up in Charlotte, and I really wanted to know if this seemed like a reasonable amount of money. It seemed like a whole lot of money to spend on tanks. And don't get me wrong, I love the Environmental Discovery Center. It is, it is my jam. It's what I would always support. But I wanted to make sure that it was reasonable. And after doing the research, the uh, quality of the products that they chose are like top of the line. It should last for a very long time. So I feel very comfortable with that subcontractor's um, proposal. So, end of my comment. Thank you. Yep, and that was 7C. Um, and thank you for highlighting that, Commissioner Tolland. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Persis. 
Yes, I want to comment on 7C as well. I was just very excited to um, to see that we are going to improve the tanks and the new tank enclosure. Um, I have grandchildren, and that's one place I take them, and they absolutely love it. So making it even better, which is what we always do in Ormond Beach, we make things just a little bit better. I'm just so excited that this is going to happen. And I, too, um, Commissioner Tullin questioned the price tag, too, and had a nice, healthy conversation with Ms. Shanahan. So... Um, I think we're all on, on board with it. It's going to be great. It's, it's just going to be a wonderful place for our children to learn. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. We'll move to public hearings. I'll open the public hearings and ask the clerk to read 8A. Ordinance number 2022-37, an ordinance amending the City of Ormond Beach Comprehensive Plan adopted by Ordinance 90-36 as previously amended by adding an objective and policies for flood risk planning in accordance with Florida Statutes Section 163.3178-2F, providing for transmitting copies of the notice and amendment to the state reviewing agencies, the County of Volusia, and any other local government or governmental agency requesting a copy, providing for public hearings, providing for conflicting ordinances, and setting forth an effective date. This is the second reading of Ordinance Number 2022-37, read by title only. Thank you. I don't have any cards on 8A. I move approval of Ordinance Number 2022-37. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Please call the vote. Commissioner Persis. Yes. Commissioner Briley. Yes. Commissioner Tallin. Yes. Commissioner Sargent. Yes. Mayor Partington. Yes. 8B. Ordinance number 2023-01, an ordinance approving the final plat for the cupola at Oceanside subdivision, a planned residential development establishing conditions and expiration date of approval and setting forth an effective date. This is a second reading of ordinance number 2023-01, read by title only. Thank you. I have uh, really only one card on AP, which is from the uh, applicant's engineering professional so uh, unless they're dying to speak on that item I'll uh, just ask for a motion in a second and commission of course if you have any questions they're here and available so. I move approval of ordinance number 2023-01 second moved and seconded any other discussion let me just say uh, I'm excited about this project I think I've said it before um, I could practically give a commercial uh, for a place that you would want to live that's just a wonderful place in the city of Ormond Beach, the walkability of it, uh, you're close to shopping, you're close to parks, you're close to sports amenities, and um, it's just, it's been an incredible project to watch from beginning to finally getting towards the end, and so I wanted to, to point that out publicly. Um, and with that, Please call the vote. Commissioner Briley? Yes. Commissioner Tallin? Yes. Commissioner Sargent? Yes. Commissioner Persis? Yes. Mayor Partington? Yes. 8C. Ordinance number 2023-02, an ordinance of the City Commission of the City of Ormond Beach, Florida, vacating a portion of West Street, a platted public right-of-way lying west of 363 Putnam Avenue, Volusia County Parcel Number 4240-03-08-0150, repealing all inconsistent ordinances or parts thereof, providing for recordation and transmittal and setting forth an effective date. This is the second reading of Ordinance Number 2023-02, read by title only. Thank you. I, I have one card from the applicant if there are any questions, Commission. Otherwise, just need a motion and a so approval. approval. Second. <laughs> Moved and seconded. <coughs> Excuse me, any discussion? Please call the vote. Commissioner Tolland? Yes. Commissioner Sargent? Yes. Commissioner Persis? Yes. Commissioner Briley? Yes. Mayor Partington? Yes. 8D. Ordinance number 2023-03. An ordinance amending the future land use element of the comprehensive plan of the City of Ormond Beach by amending the future land use map to change the designation of three parcels of real property totaling 4.25 plus or minus acres. Located at 264 South Atlantic Avenue, Volusia County, parcel number 4214-18-06-00. 
225 Magnolia Drive, Volusia County, parcel number 4214-20-04-0010 and 300 South Atlantic Avenue, Volusia County, parcel number 4214-20-02-0010 from public institutional to low intensity commercial for approximately 0 0.76 acres and from public institutional to low density residential for approximately 3.49 acres providing for conflict authorizing transmittal and setting forth an effective date this is the second reading of ordinance number 2023-03 read by title only thank you and I do have a card from the attorney representing the project who's available for questions commission I just need a motion in a second move approval second moved and seconded any questions or discussion please call the vote commissioner Sargent yes commissioner Persis yes commissioner Briley yes commissioner Tolland yes mayor Partington yes 8e Ordinance number 2023-04. An ordinance amending paragraph C, official zoning map of section 2-01, established of article 1, establishment of zoning districts and official zoning map of chapter 2, district and general regulations of the city of Ormond Beach land development code by amending the official zoning map to rezone two parcels of real property totaling approximately 2.95 acres located at 251. South Atlantic Avenue, Volusia County, parcel number 4214-19-07-0010 and a portion of 264 South Atlantic Avenue, Volusia County, parcel number 4214-18-06-0010 from B-6 Oceanfront Tourist Commercial and B-1 Professional Office Hospital to PBD planned business development authorizing revision of official zoning map repealing all inconsistent ordinances or parts thereof and setting forth an effective date this is the second reading of ordinance number 2023-04 read by title only thank you susan um again other than the attorney representing the applicant i don't have any cards for ef or g i just need a motion and a second i move approval of ordinance number 2023-04 second Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Questions? Please call the vote. Commissioner Persis? Yes. Commissioner Briley? Yes. Commissioner Tolland? Yes. Commissioner Sargent? Yes. Mayor Partington? Yes. 8F. Ordinance number 2023-05, an ordinance authorizing the execution and issuance of a develop development order for a planned business development to be located at 251 South Atlantic Avenue. Volusia County, parcel number 4214-19-07-0010 and a portion of 264 South Atlantic Avenue, Volusia County, parcel number 4214-18-06-0010 to be known as the Ormond Beach Holdings LLC, authorizing the development of the property as a hotel and remote parking lot and associated site improvements under certain conditions, repealing conditions establishing conditions and expirations of approval and setting forth an effective date. This is the second reading of ordinance number 2023-05, read by title only. Just need a motion. Mr. Mayor, move approval. Second. Moved and seconded. Any questions or discussion? Please call the vote. Commissioner Briley. Yes. Commissioner Tolland. Yes. Commissioner Sargent. Yes. Commissioner Persis. Yes. Mayor Partington. Yes. 8G. Ordinance number 2023-06, an ordinance amending paragraph C, official zoning map of section 2-01, established of article 1, establishment of zoning districts, an official zoning map of chapter 2, district and general regulations of the city of Ormond Beach Land Development Code, by amending the official zoning map to rezone portions of three parcels of real property totaling approximately one point seven zero acres located at a portion of 264 South Atlantic Avenue, Volusia County parcel number 4214-18-06-0010 and a portion of 225 Magnolia Avenue, Volusia County parcel number 4214-20-04-0010 and a portion of 300 South Atlantic Avenue, Volusia County, parcel number 4214-20-02-0010, 
from B-1 Professional Office Hospital to R-3 Single Family Medium Density, authorizing revision of official zoning map, repealing all inconsistent ordinances or parts thereof, and setting forth an effective date. This is the second reading of ordinance number 2023-06, read by title only. Again, I don't have any cards. Move approval of ordinance number 2023-06. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion, Commission? <coughs> Let me just say my thought on this property is it's going to be also a beautiful place to live, to know that you can walk across the street and be at Dunkin' Donuts, <laughs> or walk across the street and be at the beach. I mean, it doesn't get much better than that, folks. So, uh, Please call the vote. Commissioner Tolland. Yes. Commissioner Sargent. Yes. Commissioner Persis. Yes. Commissioner Briley. Yes. Mayor Partington. Yes. 8-H. Ordinance number 2023-07, an ordinance amending the future land use element of the comprehensive plan of the City of Ormond Beach by amending the future land use map to change the designation of two parcels of real property totaling approximately 13.13 acres, generally located south of the Platted Road of Pennsylvania Avenue and along the Platted Roads of Rosemary Street and Benton Street, west of Plantation Oaks Boulevard, Volusia County Property Appraiser Parcel Identification Numbers 3136-01-08-001-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0
So the proposed land use, the application seeks to go from the low density residential to the residential office retail. And the purpose of the amendment is to develop a parking lot to support the office at 801 West Granada Boulevard. One of the initial concerns was how do we know it would be a parking lot and not another commercial use. So there was a, an offer to do a map annotation that eliminates the density and eliminates the commercial square footage. So all the infrastructure imp impacts decrease. Parallel to the land use application, there was a site plan application that showed a potential parking lot. And what it did show and what the land development code requires, there's no access on to Fiesta Drive. The wall would be required on the rear and side corner. The site development would require there to be meeting, there would be landscape buffers, and there would be a lighting analysis. So it's really important, the stage we're at tonight is a land use amendment. So as, as much as we want to get into the site plan, and the planning board did and provide some recommendations, the, the true question tonight before you is this is the appropriate use of land for this property. And there's really, there's two perspectives that was discussed in this staff report. The first is that basically this is an intrusion into the Fiesta Heights residential area and shouldn't be allowed. <coughs> so that's one perspective. The other perspective is it is a parcel along Granada Boulevard, similar to the other ones here, and other properties without, within the city, and that along major commercial corridors, you should have a commercial or office land use designation. So at the planning board, um, they made determination that this was an appropriate land use. They approved the application with a four to one vote. With that, they also wanted to provide some guidance to the site plan review committee. While not technically part of the land use application, there was concerns regarding the existing fence at the rear of 801 West Granada and the sidewalk along Fiesta Drive. So their recommendation was to require a wall in lieu of the existing uh, wood fence. In 2017, there was much discussion about an improvement to the building and why wasn't why wasn't the defense converted to a wall. So going back into the files, there was no change in the use of the property. Therefore, there was no way for planning staff to require the wall to be constructed, which is why you still have a wood fence. This application, there is a reasonable connection. Properties would be joined. So if it's the desire to implement that planning board recommendation, the commission has that ability. The applicant provided a letter on uh, January 17th stating that there is a tree that would prevent uh, the installation of a missionary wall. The offering said a commercial grade vinyl fence, which certainly could be one option. Another option would be the wall and then use the vinyl fence to stand on the root of the tree. So there are some options with that issue. The second issue was the sidewalk along Fiesta. There was a desire to include a sidewalk between the potential wall and the street. There is an existing sidewalk. The issue with that sidewalk is it stops short of um, West Granada Boulevard. The secondary issue, which the applicant has expressed, is there are severe grade changes in this area, and it's their opinion that they couldn't make the grades work in order to connect the two sidewalks. Um, staff could get with their engineer and our engineer, if the commission desires to do that, and before the second meeting, we can get you some information on that. But right now, they're saying they, they, they can't make those grades work. Another issue discussed at the planning board was the lighting. There are two lights um, that are on the rear of the building, and there was some interior lighting. Um, the applicant stated in the letter that they've disabled um, that light, and they've also put the interior lights, I believe, on a timer. After the planning board staff was contacted and asked a, a question by a resident, the question was, why do you need additional parking if this property meets the land development code? requirements for, for parking. Um, the applicant has sta stated they intend to build out the, the building and they believe they need additional parking. So focusing back to what's before you tonight is really whether or not this is an appropriate use of land to go from the low density residential to the residential office retail. Um, the applicant's request to the planning board's uh, recommendations are to allow commercial grade vinyl fence and not to require the sidewalk. The applicant is here to address the commission for any questions. Thank you, Stephen. And I do have some cards. Uh, we'll start with Terry. Is it Wimpy? Thank you. Sir. Uh, 
back side of that when they originally did this back in 17 uh, we were told to hang tight we were getting the wall because all the other buildings that <coughs> legitimate businesses of any size not a hair shop or something all have walls any new uh, any new anything that CBS came in to make sure there was privacy we have no barrier they say there was no uh, uh, elevation in the parking lot and I'm sorry I don't have a but I can show you that when people stand in this parking lot they just look over and see what we're doing in, in our area and before that that was never the case when the other owners had that so they built up no curves and the fence went down in the parking lot or not and I'm sure it doesn't show that because I've asked but the main thing is, is you're going to be tearing out and I know by cutting a few trees uh, we have, we're going to lose a lot of trees and a lot of blockage of the noise that are on Granada right now in that area and we do have trucks that they do engine brakes coming into the Granada Nova intersection and by the time you take out the house the trees and if you're not going to construct us some decent buffer from that and we're going to tear out the block building we are going to we're just going to sustain all this I mean noise and the, the lights are no joke I mean that's my that's what I look at in my bedroom and we'll leave a meeting we'll go, we'll go by we'll check the lights they're at 3 o'clock in the morning they're burning as bright as can be and even if they shut the outside lights off the upper lights uh, are on inside the building there's still enough to light up almost like a ball uh, basically all I can say is we see more traffic we're going to see more people they want more parking spots you must want you're training on more, more traffic, so I think there's going to be more noise, more traffic on our road, which we're already asking for some kind of speed buffer, and Mr. Hamlin does use that as a personal turnaround. And uh, so that's fine. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you. Next is Carol Bonamy. Bonamy. I live at 98 Fiesta Drive. I'm catty cornered across the street from 101 Fiesta. I object to demolishing the house at 101 Fiesta and putting in a parking lot. It's going to destroy the look of our entrance. Our subdivision is an older and established subdivision. Everyone in there takes pride in their homes and their yards. And rarely is there ever a house for sale, and if it is, it's, it's sold immediately. So it's, it's a really desirable neighborhood and a wonderful school district, and we all en enjoy living there. Uh, the Hamlin Building and Parking Lot has 59 parking spaces. On any given day, you can drive by there, and you will see less than 25 cars parked. Now, that leaves 34 empty spaces. He says he needs 16 more. Okay, so let's say he hires more employees. Let's say he hires 25 more. Okay, so that's lose nine empty parking spaces if they all come to work at the same time on the same day. I don't know why he needs those 16 spaces when he can't fill the lot now. Please don't lose <laughs> the integrity of our entrance. It's just going to be unnecessary and I think totally out of character with the way our entrance looks. Thank you for listening. Thank you. And next is Alan Bonamy.
Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for uh, allowing us to come before you and speak today about this issue. My wife has indicated that we have lived at that property at 98 Fiesta Drive for 50 years. And we have seen Fiesta Heights grow, and we have seen the neighbors, all of whom take pride in their homes, and we hate to see the entranceway destroyed. Now what I'd like to speak to is the traffic problem that this is going to create. If you've ever been at the entrance to Fiesta Drive and tried to get out on Granada, you find cars coming out of the Walgreens, I mean the um, CVS, and they're not all CVS customers. People are shortcutting the corner and they're coming through the CVS parking lot and turning. In addition to that, people who are going south on Nova Road are turning right, so that creates more traffic. And as soon as that traffic, if you can get out, as soon as that traffic is cleared, all of a sudden you get the left turn traffic of people coming uh, north on Nova Road into uh, westbound Granada. So the question is, what's going to, and then of course you have the whole flow of uh, westbound traffic. So the question is, um, how are people going to uh, uh, negotiate if you put a parking lot in that in that place uh, that is being proposed? Um, if you look at the eastbound uh, Granada, you will find that the only way that they can have access to that parking lot is to go up to the corner and make a U-turn. That increases the westbound traffic and makes it even more difficult to get out. In addition, they can turn at Winding Woods if they're coming westbound, and then they're coming up the residential street of Quadro and out. And that has happened because I follow people who have done that. So there's all we're doing is creating a bigger traffic problem in that area, and as well as destroying what I consider the entranceway to a really nice subdivision. And I hope you will consider um, turning down this request. Thank you very much. Thank you. And then we have the applicant's representative, Paul Holub. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the Commission. My name is Paul Hall. I reside at 675 North Beach Street. Uh, and I'm just here to assist uh, Mr. Hamlin tonight. 37 years, we've never made a request for commercial land use in the zone with the intention of never building anything. But that is the only way that you could get additional parking there. Uh, so, there are covenants in this request where it will never be anything but a parking. But some of the things that um, they're not, maybe the residents aren't aware of. First of all, we didn't just turn off the lights on the back of the, of the LED. We totally disconnected them. I had our electrician go out there. We did not know. I personally didn't know that those lights were shining in the backyard. Uh, so those two large LED lights in the back of the building have been disconnected. Also. We had the electrician go into the third floor because John didn't realize that his lights were staying on the entire night. And we had the electrician re rewire those so the back side of the building should and will go off when they leave at night. They'll still keep the front side of the building lit up. So I think from that standpoint, we've worked on correcting the lights. As you can see, <laughs> Building that's existing only has one driveway in and out. When you leave this property, you can only go westbound. The parking lot that he wants to do over in this area will interconnect with this parking lot. There's zero access from this parking lot, proposed parking lot, to Fiesta Drive, to the street at the rear, to Granada. There's no access whatsoever. It'll still be just the ingress egress here. So we're not competing with, and I'm sure that the previous speaker is accurate, where people come out of CVS and come from Nova and turn. Uh, it makes it difficult to get out of Fiesta uh, Heights. But we're, on our egress, we're not going to be competing with them whatsoever. And the other thing uh, with this particular building is, 
some older photos, but you can see it was an eyesore in our city, probably one of the worst eyesores in Orna and Agonada for so many years. And a lot of these photos don't even reflect its worst time. Uh, John got involved with it in 2016, uh, and he only he renovated the exterior of the building. He only occupies the third floor. The second floor is a shell. It's not occupied, it's not built out, but it's about 8,000 feet. And when he makes that investment to build it out and either occupy it with this company or another tent, he's going to need the parking. He can't make a million dollar commitment to do an 8,000 square foot build out unless he you knows he has parking for either his business or a future tent. So that's the reason he needs to have the additional parking. And now you see what he's going with it today. Even the landscaping, I mean, that's DOT property there. He had to get a permit from it to landscape. He's tried to be a good neighbor with the subdivision. There's no question it's a very seasoned uh, and nice subdivision. It's been there, I think, since the 60s. Uh, those are the lights that, the you know, LED lights that were given uh, past us the backyard of, of the uh, neighbor public effect, even though those have been turned off. The second floor is totally empty, it's a shell. With just fluorescent lights, and we went in there and shut down the fluorescent lights because they were all on circuit. The third floor will now should now operate where the back side of the building would go dark at night. And the only lights that would be on are the small up lights uh, for the parking lot for safety. Just pictures of the lights. Uh, the fence issue, he doesn't have a problem putting up a commercial grade vinyl fence. His issue was it was never brought up before. He's made a multi-million dollar investment in this property. The uh, a cultured stone, a, uh, I'm sorry, a cast stone fence, a precast fence, or a conventional masonry fence will not fit um, a portion of the back of the property because that fence is basically on the property line. So we can't get concrete footers in to support the, the type of fence. Uh, but he has no issue with putting a commercial grade vinyl fence, uh, fence up, which is, is just another shot going the other way towards the east. And, and the fence has definitely been there quite some time, certainly before he bought it. And it is in rough condition. This is the property immediately next door. Same type of office professional use and backs up to the same subdivision. You see they have a white vinyl fence, a commercial grade. Looks like a commercial grade, a white vinyl fence across the back of their property. Um, you have the ability to, although I'm not sure why it's in this, you know, this request, but if you do have the ability, you have the ability to enforce the cast stone or pre cast masonry type wall, but you also have the ability to uh, approve a vinyl fence or no fence. He's not asking for no fence. He agrees that the fence should be replaced, but he's asking them to put a commercial grade fence on the existing property. And this is the property next door, uh, right next door to the, to the west. And that's a neighbor. That's over the, his fence. There's a neighbor with the same type of fence and uh, dividing two property lines. That's the same property next door. So on the sidewalk issue, no problem extending the sidewalk, but it's physically impossible um, to meet handicap code and FBOT code because as you turn the corner, that's what you've got. And there's just no way to make a connection uh, to that sidewalk. So the sidewalk has been, I assume, like that for quite some time. And, and on the other side of the street, it's the same way. It stops at the other corner. And it stops at the driveway and it doesn't extend out to the mountain. Uh, this utility pole with great changes, and there's just no way to connect it and make a neat handicap code. Uh, just for reference, you know, historically, the city has rezoned houses, properties that were entrance to different subdivisions, Tanglewood, uh, Tomoka View. Uh, these houses were rezoned in their commercial. Uh, matter of fact, another one at uh, Water Oak Lane was rezoned uh, in its 
somebody going to go to the house and use it for commercial? So this is the limits of the parking lot. And honestly, that's the most you can fit in there. 60, I think it's 17 or 18 spaces. But what you get with this, because of that, is you're going to have a tremendous amount of green space around the parking lot with full landscape plan, meat code with trees and bushes and so on. And this section right here would be the cast, either a precast or a masonry wall at, at six or right. It'd come here, come down the side, and then connect into theirs. We heard that some people didn't want a six foot wall. They thought that would look funny at the entrance because their, their wall, I think, uh, only goes up to about three foot plus the pillars. So, in scale or size, if they want that, we can, not that exact wall style, but we can come in and do that on the side street if that's something they want, or if we would put the six foot wall. But it would take a full site plan review approval. The lights would have light guards on them. He's agreed to shut it down uh, at eight, uh, from dusk to nine o'clock at night. And all the lights, of course, will have to be code with, with uh, shields. Uh, it will be heavily landscaped. Um, and it will be, you know, it will be totally enclosed. They'll have no access whatsoever. And he's, he would build it, and he knows that he's going to go to the second floor either to expand or to take a tenant in. Because once he does that, he's not going to have enough park. Uh, there's also some space on the first floor that could be occupied, but he's never been done. So that's the reason for the request. Um, it, the request has zero units per acre and has a, F, a floor area ratio of zero, so nothing will ever be built on this parcel other than a parking lot. And uh, I think versus what's there today as far as the home, I think with the landscaping and the wall and so on, I think it will be an improvement to the entrance. And we can work with them on the style or the scale of the wall, what, what they would like. Uh, we'll just ask for your consideration. <laughs> and Paul, did you mention the unity of title and then the uh, restriction as far as, and I think Stephen did, but if you could Yes, just... he would uh, do a unity of title, so there'd be one parcel, one tax parcel. Uh, there would never be any clawback to come back to rezone this for something else. I mean, if he didn't own the building next door and somebody was buying that home, historically, yes, if you live on, if you have a home, a residential home on Granada, they have been rezoned commercial. And he's not looking to put a commercial enterprise there. Uh, but yes, he would do a unity of titles so that locks it up. Um, and it would only be used for a parking lot for that building. And we never asked for access into the neighborhood. I do understand what some of the neighbors have said. I didn't even know you can do it as you go eastbound a couple of quarter mile before you get to this area. You go into one subdivision that connects to Yes, I didn't even know that until a couple of weeks ago. Um, and I asked them if you know, the employees do that, and says, some of them probably do, because otherwise you're going to Granada making you, I mean, to know where you're making a U-turn and come back. And he said it's certainly discouraging. Um, I don't know if you, how you can totally eliminate that. Um, but you know, he, he's, um, he's just looking to protect his investment and get it ready, whether it be his business expands or he produces uh, the second floor. And that's the, the, the reason for the request. Thank you. Thank you. Commission, any questions? Mr. Mayor? I have a question. Deputy Mayor Brown. Um, if this were to be approved, and, and the first speaker spoke about standing in his backyard with the current fence, and I guess that's a six foot high stock or shadow box fence. It's a six foot high it's fence. Current, yes, current, yeah. Currently. Um, and apparently you can still see a little bit over into the neighboring property. Uh, would there be any willingness on Mr. Hamlin's part to whether we, if, if this were to pass and either it be a wall or a fence, install an eight foot fence similar to what you did at Wawa? Um, I can speak to him about it. I know that he would replace it with a vinyl fence. Now, I can tell you that I had a stand on the six inch curb to take a photo over the fence of the vinyl fence and of the building to the west. So, yeah, I guess if you're six foot six, you might be able to see over that fence. But I understand I'm six foot Madison and I'm a curve to take those photos. So I'm not sure that you can clearly see from his side. Sure, I'm just thinking anything to 
could possibly alleviate any of those concerns. Um, and I don't even know. It may it may help with noise and glare as well. There may be a commercial, uh, you know, made for vinyl fence. We can look into that um, for that section. And I think he would replace that, even though he's not ready to build the uh, parking lot today. Uh, I think it would still take some additional hearings and approvals and then site plan uh, approval. Um, I'm sure he would replace the existing fence now. Uh, made a significant investment into the building and wants to keep it up. And quite honestly, he didn't know about. At least he told me he didn't know about the lights in the back, how, how bad they were. It just never goes in that way. It leaves before dark or just after. He never noticed it. So, and I didn't either until more recently. So we jumped on that and got that corrected. And if there's still any issues, they, they can contact us and we'll go over there. I know this is, Mr. Mayor, probably more of a question once we get the site plan, but would he project whether he occupies a second floor or another tenant in the activities after, say, 6 p.m. I mean, it would just be normal office hours. He said that you know, he'd no nighttime parking. operation. Yeah, it's going to be an office professional use. I mean, he does have more employees, a lot of work remote, but there are times when they come there, and not all those parking spaces. Uh, first of all, I didn't count 56, but could be wrong. But not all those parking spaces are functional either, just because of the way that building 35, 40 years ago was designed. Um, they, they've never had the appropriate parking. When it was built in the late 70s or early 80s. So, uh, lucky that he was able to buy the corner lot for future if he got this approved, at least he could then build out you know, the rest of the building. And that was the most part. Thank you. Any other questions? Just piggybacking on what um, Harold just said. So, the fence in the back, if you said there's no way you can do a masonry wall back there, correct? With the footer? You can't do it on the west end, about 90 feet. Um, even even a precast, they come in with a 24 inch uh, to go down. And tunnel down about three feet, even with a precast. Uh, so you couldn't do it there. And then there are utilities as you go further um, towards the east. Uh, but and the next door office has. Right, so my question to, if, 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 if it does go through and if we do agree with like a vinyl fence, would there be any willingness to maybe do some landscaping on it, to put some trees behind it? I know it would be on the properties. Um, it's very limited. The one section would be impossible because it's, it's virtually... Uh, I'm just thinking of the gentleman that spoke when you could see that one picture of his house right there. I mean, yeah. if, if there's a, an eight-foot vinyl fence, we can look into that. Um, it's, I'm sure there's something like that just, out there. I'm just trying to think of another but barrier for them. We would probably have to put something on the neighbor's side because there's right. just no room on this side. Right. Um, so we can look at that. It's just a thought. Maybe something to talk, to discuss with the neighbors. Commissioner Sargent and then Commissioner Persis. Uh, for the record, I met with Mr. Hollop on Thursday and walked the property, and it is very tight on that back side. Um, but I do agree that an eight-foot vinyl fence, uh, because I don't think the wall is an option, uh, but an eight-foot on the back side. And then on those um, up lights, is there any way, just so that you have down lights at night, turn off the up light portion so they're not... Um, Disturbing the neighbors. Yeah, we can look into that. I those of course are gone. Those, but the, the, the up lighting right there. Mm -hmm. If you just have the down light, you still have the safety of the parking lot, but you're not illuminating that whole top side. Yeah, yeah I think we can do that. Um, he just wants to add some light in that back area. I know when he first moved in, people were pulling around the back parking. You know, they're not seeing anything. They're not there after hours. Right? So, I know it's the down probably is not going to be out like you know, I think we can just that. uh, that's all that. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Persis. Yeah, Commissioner Travis, you stole my little question about the, the lights. <laughs> but um I, I wanted to also say that um Mr. Hollop, I, I was kind of 
on the same page with Commissioner Tall and Chu, just about anything to make it look less hard like a fence, just to make it look cozy and comfortable um, if this were to pass. Anything that I, I know you're so good at the landscaping and, and making things look nice. So I just would, you know, want to do everything we could to make the neighbors, if this should pass, feel better. Thank you. Just, just a couple comments. Yes, sir. When City when, Attorney when Randy done, Hayes. Yeah, when you're when you're done with your comments up here. Okay. Uh, let me go to Deputy Mayor Brian. Mr. Mayor, yeah, I just had one more question. So, if you did do a fence between the residence or a, a, a fence or a wall or whatever between the residence, any landscaping, the, the problem I, I think might be any any landscaping you put on the residence side of the fence, the applicant is not responsible for for maintaining. That would be up to the resident if you did that. So I think we just need to make that clear that you know typically we require the applicant to maintain the landscaping, but if you're putting the landscaping on the resident side, he can't access it. So. And in the one section, I'm sorry, uh, in the one section where it's wider in the back, we probably could plant some type of tree there that has a canopy that starts up higher. Uh, so we probably could plant some trees along that side. Rather than going to the neighbors and drive area, mm -hmm. and stuff. sure. And I see on the east, uh, that's on the east end. On the west end, you know, it's twelve inches of that. It's a little difficult. I've got a question either for Paul or Stephen. I'm not sure who, but the Bonamies talked about the integrity of the entrance to their neighborhood. Is it possible to keep the uh, fence? That is there now that with the Fiesta Heights on it on the west side that matches the fence on the east side, and then incorporate that into the, the site plan somehow. So the, the, the subdivision entrance wall is not being amended, and then once we get into site plan, I think that neighborhood meeting is a real good um, source to work out some of these site issues, including how the fence transitions. You know, basically they can start at six feet towards. The, the back and then and then transition down. So those could all be discussed as part of the site plan um, review. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate that. Mr. Mayor, when we get to that point, you know, we may be able to get a precast fence that has that brick style uh, potentially so it won't look so out of line with what they've got there, if that's what they like. But you know, we can bring in some examples of of the type of masonry precast that we would put on the parking lot side. I'm sure on the back of them are six feet, but I, I agree with them that might look odd with a six foot coming down. And there's, so we certainly could work and bring some examples of the different types of uh, fence that they would like to see on the street side. And that wall would be cut uh, would also have landscaping and so on from the bottom of the okay. And then I'm going to get a little crazy here, so forgive me. And this is either for you, Paul, or for you, Stephen. Can you complete the sidewalk on the east side so that the neighborhood would have at least one sidewalk that comes all the way out to Granada? Is there enough room there to do that, or have you looked at that at I all? I did not uh, check. This the uh, west side I checked. We brought transit over and shot it. We just couldn't make it. Work. I didn't check the east side. And legally, I don't even know if we can ask for that or not, but I saw that and thought that might be a possibility. Um, I don't know if we have the same telephone pole restriction over there. I don't think that there is a good picture, but uh, so that's our side, that's the west side. That's the west. Okay. So that's the east. I think you're going to have the same issue. The wall's in the way of making the connection. From him, you can make a connection, but we don't need him to have code. It's just too tight. So we'd be glad to donate to somebody else and put it in. <laughs> I just thought I'd ask. Yeah. Um, it's been like this, I, I assume it's been like this for 50 years uh, since the subdivision's been built, or maybe, maybe it did extend out to the Nile before the wire went down. I'm not sure. Um, but we could check that side and see if it's something uh, easier to do. Okay. Um, any other questions, Commission? I think I'm going to preempt Mr. Hayes. Okay. And I think he's going to tell us that we need to start readdressing that we're actually should be talking about the future land use um, changes 
and, and the other, the, our discussion is more site planning. So I have a comment about the land use, but let's let Mr. Hayes give us our lesson. City Attorney Randy Hayes. <laughs> your, your season's experience for the planning board is showing. Uh, that, that is correct. This is, a, <clears throat> this is a, a land use map amendment. And actually, the features you're talking about, they're important to the residents, of course, but it's part of the site plan process, right? It's not really something that you address as part of a, a, a land use amendment. The planning board was pretty um, strong in their recommendation. Um, you know, the re recommendation is included in Section 3 uh, of the ordinance, but that's not something it's you typically do. I think um, you know you can certainly give direction to the planning director on things that you think are important based on what you've heard this evening. That the site plan take into consideration, um, and uh, you know they can they can they can make those requirements in the context of what's allowed. And if um, they're not able to reach an accord between the planning staff, the site plan that is, and the developer or uh, property owner, then they can appeal that decision back up to this commission on that specific item, and then you can have a chance to weigh in on that. It's kind of an unus unusual procedural uh, mechanism, but that would allow you to address those site plan features in a different form than what you really have before you this evening. Thank you, Stephen. Anyone so else? So putting my little planning board hat back on, <laughs> um, you know, Mr. Spraker did say we have the two options. You know, we can consider it like it's a neighborhood or consider it like it's up against Granada. And it's 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 the use has changed, and looking at um, the properties to the west and the CVS to um, the east, to me it seems like an appropriate um, change to make to the residential office retail. As long as we stipulate, I would like to stipulate that it stays with the far as zero. So. That's kind of where my thought process is. Okay. I don't have any other cards, Commission, unless you have any other questions or concerns. I just need a motion and a second for discussion. Move approval. Second. Moved and seconded. And then um, I know we talked a lot. I don't know if we decided, because uh, it comes to us from the planning board with a masonry wall all along the back required. Was the motion to include uh, vinyl at a certain height, or that was the only thing I think? Oh, and then the sidewalk was also recommended from. from I mean, the, I, board. The, the 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 eight foot fence would work, but Randy, can we address that here? Does that need to be more like once we review the site plan? Yeah, I, I can help you out with that. So you can make a recommendation <clears throat> to uh, the site plan review committee that they consider, if, if your preference is, a, is a, a vinyl fence rather than a masonry wall, that they consider that um, whatever height you feel is appropriate, um, a far of zero um, you know, recommendation with respect to the sidewalk, you could do that as, as well. And then they'll take that into consideration. Did I miss anything, Stephen? No, uh, staff would truly appreciate that recommendation. That way we're... we're but I think on the side street on Fiesta, I think you'd want to work with the with the neighbors to make it matching or close to as, as close you can as to matching what they their existing wall on the fence. Sort of okay. So, Commissioner Persis would need to include that in her motion. I'm sorry, and then um, Commissioner Tallin would need to adopt that as part of her second as well. Is that Eight foot, the eight foot fence long back, and then on the side, work with the neighbors to determine what they wanted and make it try to complement the existing wall. I move approval um, with that the applicant would have to have an eight foot fence in the back, and then work uh -huh. with the applicants on the side for the six foot fence. Okay. And, and, and just as a clarification, eight foot vinyl across the back and a masonry type wall around the parking lot is that what we're talking about correct and then whatever embellishment we need to identify that that is fiesta heights neighborhood 
Correct. So, so okay. my understanding of the recommendation is eight foot PVC vinyl along 801 Western Road. Right. This parking lot has a requirement of a six foot uh, block or right. postman panel, and then this would transition to whatever is uh, decided at the neighborhood meeting to max the existing. Yes, yes. I can second that. Okay. Randy, are you comfortable? Yes, sir. And that would be your recommendation to the SBRC on those items. Perfect. Yes. <coughs> Any other discussion? Please call the vote. Commissioner Persis? Yes. Commissioner Briley? Yes. Commissioner Tolland? Yes. Commissioner Sargent? Yes. Mayor Partington? Yes. 8J. I think we're on L. IJ? We skipped with J. J and K. We got L. Oh, you're right. We did skip J and K. Thank you. Man, I'm just going down the line. <laughs> and we skipped skip the line. All right. 8L. Thank you, Susan, for keeping me straight. Ordinance number 2023-11, an ordinance authorizing the execution and issuance of a first amended development order regarding Ormond Central planned business development by approving and authorizing a planned business development to be known as Ormond Central Unit 1 self-storage located at 1 South Old Kings Road, Volusia County, parcel number 4241-01-09-018. Seven six zero West Granada Boulevard, Volusia County, parcel number four two four one dash zero one dash zero nine dash zero one seven zero. No address South Old Kings Road, Volusia County, parcel number four two four one dash zero one dash one one dash zero one three zero. And no address West Granada Boulevard, Volusia County, parcel number four two four one dash zero one dash one one dash zero one two zero. Authorizing a three-story indoor self-storage use with a build, building of 106,140 square feet and associated site improvements as an allowed use within the Ormond Central property and by amending the allowed floor area ratio, FAR, from 55,000 square feet to 131,140 square feet for the entire Ormond Central property under certain conditions, establishing conditions and expirations of approval and setting forth an effective date. This is the first reading of ordinance number 2023-11, read by title only. Thank you, and I'll ask our planning director to speak on this item as well. Good evening, Steve Stricker. This is a planned business development amendment for the Ormond Central property. The property has an existing land use of residential office retail, and the zoning is a planned business development. So it already went through the zoning map amendment and the issuance of development order in 2017. The approval uh, envisioned a four lot commercial subdivision with a spine road that connected West Granada Boulevard to Old Kings Road. There were certain site improvements such as the landscaping um, along the buffers and then the stormwater pond. All this was master design for the uses. There are also within the development order a very detailed uh, conditions regarding truck traffic on Old Kings Road. It restricted the building height from what the zoning previously allowed from 75 feet to 45 feet and established a floor area ratio, basically how big of a building could go on the property to 55,000 square feet. This amendment has, has two key aspects. One is to allow the three-story indoor cell storage unit that is not an allowed use in that underlying zoning of that B9 or within a development. So they're asking for a use that, that's not authorized in their original approval. And then they're also, also asking to amend the 55,000 square feet of commercial area to 1, 1,331, 140 square feet. So because of the size of the building, they're increasing the overall square footage of the floor area show. The site plan shows Unit 1, uh, they've done increased landscaping around the perimeters, including uh, the planting of large oak trees, and then they've allowed a perimeter uh, turnaround. They've moved all the uh, commercial uses, such as the loading and the dumpster, um, to the east of the building, and they've also um, tried to use this building to, in essence, shield other uses of the development. This project is unique in that they had uh, two neighborhood meetings. So they received a number of comments from the first neighborhood meeting, 
they went back, um, they redesigned the building, they lowered the height of the building, they added landscaping, they made uh, substantial improvements, which uh, were well received in the second year. The strongest attribute of this project is significantly reducing project trips. The original approval allowed 24,000 square foot retail use. So that use could generate up to 1,777 average daily trips. This one, according to the Institute of Traffic Engineers, would generate 265. If you listen to uh, storage facility uses, they say it's even lower than that. That's an 85% reduction in traffic. The uh, building, as mentioned earlier, has been reduced to uh, 39 feet. Again, the development order original one allowed 45. The original zoning allowed 75. So they dropped the overall height of the building. In your packet, there are correspondence um, concerns about traffic, incompatible use, the height of the building, restrict access, um, not to include Old King Road, um, the question of whether or not a self storage use is needed. The planning board did recommend approval five to zero, and if approved, it would be on the commission agenda for February 7th. And the applicant is here for justification. Thank you, Stephen. <clears throat> Any questions for Stephen? And commission, uh, any questions for the applicant? Does the applicant wish to speak, or I just need a motion and a second otherwise? Mr. Mayor, the only comment I would have is just, you know, I, I, I do kind of like this use over other uses because of the, uh, the traffic impact. I mean, storage units are a lot of times where people just take their stuff to die. They don't, you know, they put it in there, they forget about it, they never go, you know, they don't visit it, so. Commissioner Sergeant. I just have a question on the landscaping. Is that exactly how it's going to look when we get done? Because <laughs> it looks really good. I'm just, just curious. Please. Uh, good evening. Joey Posey, 420 South Nova, uh, attorney for the developer. And uh, funny enough, that same question came up with planning board. And uh, the representation I made there was that is that is the landscaping we intend to have for the project. So, um, that's the expectation on our end. And you know, we worked very hard with the neighborhood to try to come up with something that shielded at least a visual look from Granada, from Old Kings, setting the building far enough back. And that I, that was something I think I was very happy with where the end result was. So um, hopefully that answers the question. For the record, I've spoken to Mr. Heaster about this project in the past. Commissioner Tolland. And I too have spoken with um, Mr. Heaster about this project and just um, as far as use goes, I think it is a preferred use because of the traffic, decrease in traffic. That seems to be the hot spot for, for all of us in Orman, and I think this is awesome for that. I do think, um, what do I think? I think that the applicant really addressed a lot of the issues that uh, complaints that the neighbors had. The only the only question I have, and in, in, I'm going to say it's a somewhat of a disappointment, was when I was really scrutinizing the packet, I saw that there were um, two um, arborists, and there was comparison. One was Don Spence, and the other gentleman I'm not familiar with. And there were some red highlighted areas of some discrepancies on historic trees. Um, I have a lot of respect for Don Spence. He's a very good arborist. I'm just wondering whatever happened with how did you reconcile those two reports in, in how those determining which trees were taken down? And you know that I'm going to ask about trees because that's what I do. Sure. So that was um, part of the 2017 approval. So basically our city landscape architect uh, worked with both of those um, arborists uh -huh. and came up with a recommendation for tree preservation. And tree removal, um, as I recall, the hurricanes did have some impacts to some of those trees. So if you recall on the report, there was some damage to some of the existing. Right. So that that portion has already been approved with the original development order, and this is basically supplementing a portion of that development. So that was primarily historical information. Correct. It was a request to be included in the correspondence. Okay. So, um, whatever correspondence we received on the project, we included. All right. Thank you. Appreciate that. Commissioner Persis. Yeah, I have a, a, a question for you. Thank you, sir. Um, you know, I love the picture of it. It looks great. I think the applicant's done a really good job about, you know, trying to do the right thing here, and it will, re 
you won't be as much traffic. I, I love the, the trees. I love all the green. And I just want to make sure that the applicant will keep it looking like that. Oh, yes, yes, yes. You know, because it's, it's you know, and maybe even add to it because it, it's such a pivotal corner. I mean, it, it really is. It's a great area. P people go past it all the time. It's right there in Granada. And um, I just want to make sure that, you know, it will just continue to look nice and stay green. Yeah, it, yeah, that's exactly right. And I, I actually wanted to mention something to Commissioner Collin that I think it echoes both of your comments that um, we actually added the of above and beyond what the landscaping yeah. was required out there, seven mature oaks that are going to be planted at 20 feet. So, you know, the goal here is, you know, besides the, the dense vegetation, it's mature, it looks good from the get-go, mm -hmm. and, you know, it's in our best interest, too, to make that visually appealing Right. Uh, is you know, part of the aesthetic at that corner because you know, this is also part of an overall development for you know, what's going on to the to the west of it, right. to the east of it also. So we're sure. going to say we, we agree with you. Yeah, we're and where are those oak trees going? Because I don't really see them in that. And in this one's hard to tell, but they would be along Old Kings. Okay. Okay. I like that they're mature. Thank you. <laughs> yep. I think we're ready for a motion in a second. Move for approval. I would like to second it. Moved and seconded. Just for the record, I spoke to Paul Hola very briefly on this project. Not really in depth on anything. It was essentially we're working very hard to address all the concerns, is what he told me. And from what I've seen tonight, I think that's that's true. Mr. Any, Rath, just for transparency, I think I spoke with Mr. Holloway and Mr. Easter both on this as well. Great past. Lewis, I don't know how I missed you. I'm sorry, but I didn't get to chat with you on this one. But. Unless there's any other discussion or questions, Susan, please call the vote. Commissioner Briley. Yes. Commissioner Tolland. Yes. Commissioner Sargent. Yes. Commissioner Persis. Yes. Mayor Partington. Yes. And we go to 8M. Ordinance number 2023-12, an ordinance authorizing the execution and issuance of a first amended development order for the Storit North Orman Plan business development located at 1405 North U.S. Highway 1, Volusia County Property Appraiser Parcel Number 3136-01-45-0010, authorizing a three-story indoor self-storage use with a building of 125,534 square feet and associated site improvements as an allowed use within the Storit North Orman plan business development under certain conditions, establishing conditions and expirations of approval and setting forth an effective date. This is the first reading of ordinance number 2023-12 read by title only. Thank you, Susan. And uh, let's see, I will ask Planning Director Stephen Spraker to speak on this one. Good evening, Stephen Spraker. This is a request again for a planned business development. Uh, this property is located in the interlocal service boundary area. Um, it, it started in Volusia County with some site construction um, that eventually stopped. So today um, it has been annexed. It has a low intensity commercial land use and it has an existing planned business development. That planned business development was called the Village Business Center. Um, the development order was incorporated from Volusia County. It allowed a uh, retail of about 14,000 square feet and an office of about 13,000 square feet. Um, the existing plan shows the self-storage uh, facility. There's also an area for offices, about 2,500 square feet. The site plan uh, saves a number of the existing vegetation along the corner of Pine Tree Drive and US-1. Interesting to note that there is, um, the access is not from US-1. The access will be um, from the, the north parcel and from Pine Street. So there's no primary access on North US 1. The applicant has uh, not asked for any waivers. For example, they're installing a uh, required missionary wall along the property. Um, the building elevations um, are truly like an office building, um, no exterior wall doors. Um, planning board did recommend approval 5 to 0. <laughs> Thank you. And the applicant's representative is here as well as the applicant. Um, any questions for Parker? Commission Commissioner Persis. Hi Parker. I have a quick question. And it's 
I'm looking on page 2022 of my packet, and I notice like the store it sign is like in red. It says yellow. Those are not the colors, are they? Okay, I just want to make sure. Parker mentioned Bird, but <laughs> with Avenue. Um, no, those aren't the colors. Okay, good. And is it like the photo showing? It would look, or the, is that what the colors would look like? Um, that's the proposed colors of the building, yes. Okay. And the monument sign would <clears throat> match those colors, basically. The okay, base. okay. That's what I saw. I just, I just didn't like that. I wasn't sure. Okay, okay. thank you. Any other questions for Parker? Parker, anything you want to tell us? I think Stephen covered it. Yeah, I kind of live on the end of the street at the end of Pine Tree, and uh, it was originally uh, you know, planned to be perhaps a, a pharmacy and uh, medical offices. You know, it sat for quite a while, and um, this is a use that will move forward, and I think. Um, the aesthetics of the building, you know, driving by the US 1 corridor, it's going to be a great thing. So that's kind of my high points on it. Thank you. Commission, I just need a motion and second. I move approval. Second. Moved and seconded. Any further questions or discussions? I do. Please I, call the vote. Yeah. Commissioner Tolland? Yes. Commissioner Sargent? Yes. Commissioner Persis? Yes. Commissioner Briley? Yes. Mayor Partington? Yes. And Commissioner Tolland, I'm sorry if I cut you off there. Did you want to make a comment? I was just going to say I thought it was the right place for a storage unit on the on the corridor, and it was very attractive. And I, I like the fact that you um, addressed the water drainage issues. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll close the public hearings, move on to resolutions 9A. Resolution number 2023-45, a resolution authorizing the acceptance of a public stormwater drainage access and maintenance easement from Casey Edward Ford and Megan Marie Ford for property located at 363 Putnam Avenue, providing for recordation and setting forth an effective date. This is resolution number 2023-45, read by title only. All right. And Stephen Spraker, Planning Director, if you'll speak briefly. I think we're all pretty well familiar with this one. This is uh, an item except the attorney GC. <laughs> all right. And the applicants here, Commission, if you have any questions, otherwise just need a motion and a second. Mayor, move approval. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Please call the vote. Commissioner Sargent? Yes. Commissioner Persis? Yes. Commissioner Briley? Yes. Commissioner Tolland? Yes. Mayor Partington? Yes. 9B. Resolution number 2023-46, a resolution of the City Commission of the City of Ormond Beach, Florida, approving the preliminary plat for the Tides Edge at Ormond Beach subdivision, establishing conditions and expiration date of approval and setting forth an effective date. This is resolution number 2023-46, read by title only. Very good. Uh, Commission, I don't have any cards on this one if you have questions for Stephen let him know otherwise I need a motion in the second I move approval of resolution number 2023-46 second, second. moved in second any, second. there's any too many seconds <laughs> questions or other discussion please call the vote Commissioner Persis yes Commissioner Briley yes yeah. Commissioner Tallinn yes Commissioner Sargent yes Mayor Partington Yes, and we will begin reports, suggestions, and requests with City Manager Joyce Shanahan. Mr. Mayor, um, I thought we had a very productive meeting um, before the commission meeting with the FDOT, so thank you very much for your time for that. Um, on January 31st, uh, you will have a strategic planning meeting. That's an opportunity for the commission to get together, review their goals, and identify new um, priorities uh, for the coming years. Um, each of you have spoken with Michelle Bono to share your thoughts with her. And so we look forward to that meeting. I think that starts at 530. Is that right? 530? Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Um, on February 7th, we have uh, the stormwater master plan uh, finalization. We'll bring that to you for consideration. Um, and then we're looking to um, 
review some additional items with you. Um, staff would like to have some one-on-ones to update you on um, specific projects, so we'll get with you to uh, identify those um, to kind of give you a heads up before those things come to the commission. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Um, any tonight. questions for the city manager? Thank you very much. Thank you. Assistant City Manager Claire Whitley. Thank you. Thank you. And City Attorney Randy Hayes. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, Randy. And tonight we start with Deputy Mayor Briley. Have a good evening. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Tolland, you're on the spot. Oh, I got a paper. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Next time I'll try to cut it back. Give her time. That's right. Um, I, first of all, I just wanted to express my condolences to the family and friends of Dave Pizzo, um, our city photographer. Um, his talents and kindness will be missed. Um, and I'd also like to express a very deep sympathy to those dealing with grief and mental illness in either their personal lives or their professional lives, particularly our first responders. Um, and I want you to know that you are supported and you are loved. Um, on another note, I'd like to quickly share some activities that I've participated in the last few weeks. Whether you want to hear it or not, I want to share. Um, Arbor Day was last week. Uh, the city planted a red maple at the Environmental Discovery Center, and we heard a very kid-friendly talk from an environmentalist, Joan Trague. Tog, I'm sorry. Um, we were invited to a reception at the EDC, and the children um, that were present were able to craft and learn about plants and animals and insects all around them. I also attended a second Arbor Day at Holly Hill Elementary, where the Garden Club of Halifax Country planted a red maple tree, and we were treated by the Holly Hill Students Garden Club, who gave us some adorable presentations. And um, Commissioner Persis' husband, Carl, was there as a representative from the school board. Um, I attended a Main Street meeting. The group is gearing up for some fun events for the city. Um, the FDOT listening session on shore restoration was quite informative. Starry Starry Night celebrated art and culture and our beautiful history, and it was appreciated um, and was very well done, albeit it was a little chilly. And I think the highlight for me that night was the hot chocolate in between the museums. Um, I will be attending the River to Sea Loop Alliance Conference this Friday in DeBerry. I'm looking forward to learning, um, hearing some notable speakers and learning how we can increase our connectivity of our trails locally. Finally, um, well not finally, I got a couple extra comments. Um, I'm pleased that the Timber Creek apartment co project asked for a continuance tonight. Um, I would like to think that this is indicative of the developer's willingness to pre present a project that is neighborly and one that represents the high standards of our city. Um, I also applaud those who have taken the extra time to voice their concerns either through pen or person. Um, I would like to just just throw th a couple things out there that I wouldn't mind having a workshop on the museum and the welcome center idea. If you, if we can just throw, I'm just throwing ideas out there and I don't know how we move that through. Um, I would like a discussion on the signs and the panhandling. I think that's really um, quite creative what the city of Daytona Beach um, is doing and what uh, Mr. Selby showed us. And I would I'd like to ask staff if there's an update report on the Doug Thomas Way. Um, I know that was an approved project. I'm just wondering where we are with that. And lastly, I heard rumors that Mr. Jones, Bill Jones, enjoyed the beautifully lit trees during the holidays on Main Street and that he possibly may be, may be willing to pay for lighting year round. And I'm wondering if we can talk to him about that. Yes. And with that, I'll say good night. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Mayor Briley, you had one item. I'm sorry. Well, I just wanted to say, too, I was so, uh, sorry to hear and my thoughts and prayers with the Pizzo family. Uh, Dave was a, a very nice gentleman, and, and he certainly will be missed. Um, I, too, attended the Starry Starry Night thing, the uh, Starry Starry Night event. It was a great event. Uh, the Historical Society had a, a, a nice uh, uh, display of some old Mormon postcards uh, donated by Ned Kraft at the uh, McDonald House. And lastly, um, I did want to note that somebody from this community uh, passed away recently. 
Greg Beer, who had Greg Steak and Shrimp on US One, passed away uh, over the last week. So, want to make note of that. Thank you, Commissioner Sergeant. I'll try to be short. Um, recently, at, at the last commission meeting, and then in the Ormond Observer, Mr. Val Kick, he was here. He's already left. Jerry, um, Jerry. Um, he asked the city to explore converting its fleet um, to electric vehicles. Just wanted to see if there's any other commissioners that would like to um, ask staff to explore this. And by explore, I don't mean uh, too in depth at this point, but maybe reach out to Winter Park. Uh, Winter Park did a case study uh, June of 2020, and it was called the Municipal Fleet Elect Electrification. Um, so maybe we could just direct staff to um, just to provide us some more information on that. I think it. I, I personally think it's a good idea, to, at least to investigate it. I think we owe it um, to our citizens just to, to take a look and see without without spending too much time on it yet and seeing if it's something that we would enjoy later. So that's three, Joyce. Okay. Um, uh, another thing, uh, Councilman uh, Kent was here, and I don't know if this... Uh, we want to send a letter of support for the dog friendly beach um, in Ormond. I've heard from several residents that are, are highly in favor of it, so I just don't know if, if that's something we want to send a letter before the February 4th meeting. Um, I don't know if there's anyone else that wants to, would be interested in doing that. I'm dying. Yeah, I was going to say, how do we do that, um, Mayor? Well, with these I mean, requests that we're asking, we're the newbies. So, and how where does, do you want where do you want the dog free beach? I mean, my understanding was it would be in front of the uh, Crotty Bicentennial Park would be a good location for it. That's not in Ormond Beach. So, if we sent a letter that was just kind of in general support, and then let the county council determine where, uh, I just don't know that any of our hotels or property owners want them chosen as the dog beach it's only going to be a hundred yards but it's like picking winners or losers for us um if it's not someplace outside of the maybe, city yeah, maybe we'll wait support it with discussion there. with with further discussion yeah. as location can we do that i kind of like the the bicentennial park only because they already have a dog park there so it would kind so of you know, make sense yeah. So maybe a letter in support of it at that location. Uh, Joyce, if you could draft something and bring it back to us for approval maybe next next meeting. Is that enough time? Yep. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, that should do it. Um, also would like to remind citizens that help is available by calling um, 988, which is the Suicide Crisis Lifeline. Um, and now veterans can now receive mental health um, help through the VA, even if you're not enrolled, um, not, not currently enrolled in the in the VA system. Um, with everything going on now, I think you know it's, it's good to provide these options. Um, thank you to all of our first responders. It's been I think this last week was pretty tough for all y'all um, with a couple incidents that have happened. Um, Thank you to staff for the, the updates to the city website. And with that, I'll say good evening. Thank you, Commissioner and Commissioner Persis. Good evening, everyone. Gosh, I'm so sorry that Mr. Hollib walked out because I wanted to say something about him real quickly. Um, he gave 14 students the experience of attending an Orlando Magic game along with the Ormond Beach police officer Greg Stokes. Um, they rode to the game on a charter bus, they dined in the VIP lounge, and then they watched the Magic play the San Antonio Spurs. So um, Paul really made a difference in the lives of these children, and I know he doesn't like to get, like, to, to be recognized, but I was hoping he I was hoping he would stay. He just walked out the door. But um, but I was just really, I know, I know children, and I know what a big impact that made on their lives. It's something they'll never forget, and he did just a wonderful thing. Um, I also wanted to um, send my sentiments and deep sympathy to Dave Pizzo's family. I've known Dave a long, long time, and um, it was just a very sad, sad thing, and um, I just wanted to mention, mention that. And I also attended the Arbor Day event at the Environmental Discovery Center. And, you know, being a former principal, um, you know, these kids throwing dirt on planting a tree, 
they're going to remember that. They're going to want to do that again. They're going to want to save another tree. And so that was, it's just such a great event. It's one of my most favorite events that the city puts on. And um, it's just, it's just really important that we get our young people and, you know, concerned with our environment, especially right here in our beauty, beautiful city of Ormond Beach. And with that, I'll say good night. Thank you, Commissioner. And um, I went to Dave's uh, funeral service on Saturday, I, th I think it was, and uh, beautiful service. Uh, he was a kind, intelligent, uh, caring city photographer, and he created a body of work that will live on for hundreds of years. Uh, I mean, if you go in the Ormond Beach Library now and look on the walls at the pictures from 100, 150, 200 years ago, uh, and you fast forward 300 years, it's going to be Dave Pizzo's pictures of the city of Ormond Beach on the wall. He just uh, saw the city in such a, a positive way, and his photographs, I think, reflected that year after year at the State of the City in the pamphlets uh, on our website and then in the videos that he would do as well. And he loved being the Ormond Beach photographer. He was very proud, very proud of that designation. And uh, I don't know if he was uh, so such a professional because he was so good at it or if he was so good at it because he worked so hard at it Maybe it was a little bit of both, but he was just incredible, and uh, he was everywhere. I mean, we go to a lot of events that are city-related. He was at every single event, and he would get there early, and he would uh, talk to people, find out what was going on with them, and when we would get there, he would say, so-and-so needs a little help, or, you know, this person needs this taken care of. So he made us all better, basically, with his professionalism, and so... Uh, it was an honor to declare him Ambassador Emeritus status uh, for uh, his memory and to present his family with a with a key to the city. Uh, you heard the testimonies of so many people that day who talked about what an incredible individual he was and uh, having had the opportunity to know him for the last couple decades, I think uh, he will be missed and... Um, it's just a sad, sad thing. Um, as far as Arbor Day, moving on to some positive things, it was a beautiful day that Friday. I mean, just incredible out there at the park. And we had a great group of uh, parents and children who were very engaged. Uh, Joan Teague did an amazing job. She's so smart. I built her up a little bit telling the kids how smart she was. <laughs> but then when she uh, gave her presentation, it was obvious how smart she was. And Commission, we, those of you that were there, we joked a little bit before it started about doing a cheer for trees. She actually did a cheer for <laughs> trees with the children, and that was awesome too. So it was just a great event and enjoyed it. Enjoy it every year. Um, I've already recognized Bob and Bobby Coleman. They're incredible. And the Civic League, I think it was certainly appropriate for them to be recognized as Ormond Beach residents. That was a wonderful event. Today I had the opportunity, and I see Gigi Galloway sitting back there. Uh, I'm not sure that I saw him there, but it, it was a Tigerific Tuesday uh, at Hooligans in the Daytona Flagler area. Clemson Tiger Club met there for Tigers on Tour, which is a program um, extremely orange and a ton of positive support. And those folks are having a great time, many of whom are, are from Ormond Beach. I didn't know Julian Lopez was a Clemson Tiger. Um, I knew Dr. Cartledge was, and that group proudly claims all of those folks and Gigi as well. So. Um, it was great to present them with a proclamation. They do a lot of wonderful community service things that people would not really know about, as well as uh, supporting financially the Educational Institution of Clemson and uh, providing scholarships for local students who go to Clemson University. So that was a lot of fun and enjoyed 
enjoy that. Um, transportation. Commissioner Tolland, you're going on the 27th to hear Billy Hathaway, uh, former district director from the DOT, who's now a consultant, very well respected throughout the entire state. I may try to get there for that. I'm not sure that I will, but um, I have TPO tomorrow morning, Transportation Planning Organization, and then uh, the roundtable of elected officials met Monday morning and they're going to have a transportation subcommittee and uh, Deputy Mayor Briley, I was thinking about you for that with your uh, years of transportation experience. They're also going to have a bridge subcommittee and a Nova Canal subcommittee. I'm going to be on the bridge subcommittee and the Nova Canal subcommittee, so doing transportation would be just a little too much, but if, you want, if you're interested in doing that, and I have no idea when the meetings are going to be. I don't think they do either yet. Uh, City Manager Shanahan, uh, County Manager Rechtenwald indicated he was going to bring that to all the managers to plan how to best uh, staff those committees and meet. So that'll be that'll be tomorrow morning, I think, for you. That was that's what he said. Okay, so. Commissioner Briley, I just wanted to bring that to your attention uh, when it comes up. As far as the bridges go, Chief Godfrey, I'm going to need your and your staff's help with the best ideas and options for how to coordinate the response between the Sheriff's Department and all the different agencies during emergency situations. Um, because it, Every time it happens, it seems in the past few years, it's been a little bit of a nightmare. And I'm not mad at anybody about it. I just think we can do better and our residents deserve better. And I think you probably have some good ideas on how to make it work effectively. So city manager, if, if you can help with that as well and allow the chief to, to provide some assistance on that. I would appreciate it greatly. And then as far as the Nova Canal, cities from Ormond all the way to, to Port Orange are dealing with the Nova Canal situation, and uh, I just thought it was important that we be represented on that, and I wanted to make the commission aware of that. Um, <clears throat> the Ormond Beach Historical Society does an incredible job, and these last few years especially, they've been putting out their annual report which I enjoy reading. I'm so excited to uh, just point out a couple highlights to you. Proudly serving Ormond Beach for more than 46 years, uh, they have no line of credit and no debt. They're a very financially stable organization. 4,780 volunteer hours and 458 members and um, I think during our strategy session next week, we may talk about some possibilities. From what what I can see, maybe working on the 50-year agreement might be the first step before moving forward and the easier step. I think that's something that's more doable to allow them to do the fundraising, but we'll talk about that more during the strategic planning sessions. <clears throat> and then I just want to give a shout out to Yulia Bussinger. She has done an amazing job. I think this document really is her work in large part. She's done some amazing things at museums and other parts of the country, and she's bringing that experience and knowledge to us. And uh, I really am impressed with, <clears throat> excuse me, her professionalism. And I think she's going to take our historical society to the next level. So, other than my closing remarks, which have to do with the issue that we've had a couple times these past weeks, and Commissioner Tolland and Commissioner Sargent, you you commented on it as well with uh, one shooting at the Advent Hospital, uh, a 76-year-old woman, I think, shot her husband is the allegation uh, that appears to be and she's been charged with murder as a result of that. And then uh, there was a suicide. I hope and I know our first responders 
get the opportunity to have counseling if they need it or talk to someone if they need it. Um, I just wish people would talk to somebody or ask questions to somebody or tell somebody how they're feeling rather than then act on these uh, difficult situations because it's harder on the people that are left behind and particularly on the first responders who have to deal with those situations. It puts them in dangerous situations, especially if you look at the, the hospital there where we backed up Daytona on a, on a situation that they didn't know what it was until maybe 20 or 30 minutes into it. Um, but also, you know, in a suicide situation, it's just a, a horrible thing for an officer, uh, a firefighter, uh, ambulance person to have to see or deal with. Uh, 10 or 15 years ago in Flagler County, they had one young deputy that worked the west side of the county. And at night, he would come upon an occasional suicide. It just you know, it happens. It's terrible. But, um, and then he ended up having a downward spiral in his career. It started a drinking problem and then he passed away in his early thirties. And I think a lot of that was because he wouldn't talk to somebody to get help for the PTSD caused by witnessing those types of, uh, scenes. And when you're young in your twenties, and you're the only person out there first on scene seeing those things, uh, it creates a lot of stress in your life. And so, um, again, I'm proud that in Ormond Beach we have programs to help our first responders available. I think, you know, the, the tough guy or tough girl attitude of, oh, it's no big deal, I can handle it, uh, that needs to get thrown out the window and you should be talking to people about what you're seeing, what you're thinking, and what you're feeling, and don't let the peer pressure of, that's just what we do because we're tough, uh, get in the way of that. So, I don't know enough about it, Chief, Chiefs, you know more about it than I do, but I just think it's important that our folks feel comfortable uh, getting the help that they need and is available to them, at least knowing that it's there and talking about it uh, would be a lot better. The situation at the hospital, you know, that I don't understand at all, but it put not only nursing staff, doctors, first responders, all kinds of people at risk that didn't have to be at risk, where if there were issues, they could have talked to folks and handled that in, in such a far better way. So I've said enough about that and I'll leave it for now, but, uh, and sorry to end on kind of a sad note, but with that, we are adjourned.